these people, I don't know. Whenever every time I I come here, they will first keep you for like two hours before the food would be would be ready. But I guess because the food is good, they like to they like to fill themselves. I heard from the great band that you're now working with Paystack, big girl, you're yeah, balling in the big leagues. I heard you've got some over 100,000 subscribers. Congratulations. Ah, it's nothing. I mean, look at you now. Look at your hair. Your, your hair might cut as much as my car. <laughs> Stop flashing. Hmm. So, so I was surprised when I heard you ask Teresa for my number. Hmm. Why is that? Well, firstly, you haven't taken me out to a fancy dinner since like um, 2020 when you hit 10k. And um, and what? Speak, speak freely. Speak your mind. What do you want to say? Which one is um, complete the sentence? And uh, I need to marry. <coughs> um. Well, yeah, yeah, I am. But but what? So married people are not allowed to have friends. So we're gonna be just friends. Yeah, we're gonna be friends. What? But don't you want to be my friend? We're not gonna be just friends, and this won't be the last time you take me out for dinner. You finish what you've started. Welcome to today's video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to draft and sew the top that you've seen on the thumbnail and in the footage before now. So, like I always do, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to draft a bodice. Now, under this um, you know, uh, excess and the whole cowl effect that you can see, is simply just a bodice at the end of the day. For my fabric, I have two yards of fabric. Here it is. Here it is. I have two yards of soft and slightly stretchy crepe fabric so i got something that was slightly stretchy for when we are cutting the sleeve part because i want the sleeve to be fitted um but yeah i didn't want lycra that would be difficult to sew so this is like a nice in between all right so two yards of fabric first thing i'm going to do i'm going to go ahead to draft a bodice all right so let's breeze through this part because this is the easy part First thing I'm going to do, place half inch at the top for my shoulder allowance. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to place all my vertical measurements. Vertical measurements are measurements that come from your shoulder running down. Um, so for the first vertical um, measurement, we have our under bust length. The under bust length that we're working with is 14 inches. And using this under bust length, we'll find our bust. So a standard measurement I like to use, your under bust length minus 4 inches will give you your bust. So 14, 14 minus 4 is 10. That's where we're placing our bust line. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to place the, um, the waist measurement. So the waist measurements are coming from the shoulder to where we have the belly button. And that is 20 inches. And then we're going to place the top length which is 24. Though this top is best tucked inside something, so yeah, that's where we have this one here. That's why the shirt is a bit long, but make sure you wear it with something that's a bit high-waisted. Simply rule lines across all the vertical points you have. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to place all our measurements across. So the first measurement we are going to work with is our um, <coughs> is our uh, shoulder measurement. The shoulder measurement is 15, 15 divided by 2, 7.5. We are going to place that here. And then we are going to slope our shoulder by 1 inch. So right at that point we are going to make a slope. Alright, and then the next thing we are going to place our armhole. So the formula for finding your armhole is your bust measurement divided by 6 plus 1.5. I'm dealing with a bust of 37, or well, 36 divided by 6 plus 1.5 is 7.5. I'm going to just place 7.8. But yeah, the formula is your bust divided by 6 plus 1.5. Just roll down to that point, roll a line across. 
Alright, and then next thing we're going to do is we're going to place the bust measurements, we're going to place the under bust round, and we're going to place the waist measurement. So for the bust measurements that we are working with, we're working with the bust measurements of 37, 36 is 9, so 37 should be 9.25. So 9.25, I'm placing that here. And then the next thing we're going to place is the waist measure, the under bust round measurement. So the other bus round is 32, 32 divided by 4, um, 32 divided by 4 is going to give us 8 inches, we are going to place that here. And then we are going to come down to where we have our um, waist measurements, so you take the measurement around where you have the belly button. Um, so for me that's still 32, 32 divided by 4 is still 8, I am going to place that here. Now because this part here is after the belly button. This part here is after the waist, and after the waist, ladies start to, you know, open up a bit. Now, even though this will be tucked inside, we still want to keep room for that so that there's no discomfort underneath whatever is tucked under. So here, I'm going to add an extra 1.5 inches to whatever I have here. So here, I had 8 inches, alright, to so whatever you had at your waist. So here, I had 8 inches, so down here, I'm going to place 9.5, okay? So I've added 1.5 to the 8 inches. I'm going to simply connect all these lines together. Alright, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to simply keep 1.5 inches everywhere for my allowance on the side. Alright? So, with this we are done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut a neckline. Alright, so for the neckline that we're going to use for the front, we're going to cut it with the neckline width of 3 inches for the neckline width for the wideness. 3 inches and for the depth we are going to come down to 3.5 this is still going to drop lower than this later on so if you do 3 and 3 that's still fine but I'm going to do 3 and 3.5 you've seen the end result so you can decide if that was too low for you if what you saw in the video of how putting it on is too low you come up by half an inch that, that should be fine I don't see that getting terribly bad add half an inch up here again you see where I wrote the line that line there is serving as my shoulder allowance now now we have drafted the first part of our um, of our top, all right. So now we're going to cut the front and the back at the same time. So what I want you to do is draw a neckline on this front that will be used for the back. So how are we going to do that? We're going to simply come from here. I'm going to come down to one inch. You see that, and then we're going to make a curve from here. Then fold it down. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, we're going to cut our neckline to be small. You see this? So remember that high neckline we cut that I said is for the back. We're going to cut it first. And then you're going to come to the bottom. You're going to keep a space of one inch away from the hem. So you can see the hem we have here. We're going to come down one inch away from there. And that's where we're going to make our cuts. Then you're going to fold it the way I'm folding it, keep it nice and smooth. And then we're going to cut everything else to be good. Alright, after we've done that, you can see we have cut our hemming allowance to also have the shape so that by the time we hem it, everything will be fine. So this back here, this is the pattern we're going to use to cut the back of the dress as it is okay so this is it all right this one here will not make any change to all the changes we need to make we need to make on the front so that's the reason why we folded so that we cut the back using this original pattern and we'll know that this back here is the right dimension that we need all right so keep this one aside we're going to need to make a lot of changes to this guy right here all right now i'm cutting the neckline I'm cutting the neckline to be as I want it to be in the front first. So after cutting it, let's start to make the changes. Now, if you've seen the image that we are working with, you will notice that we have some darts at the shoulder. All right. So up here at the shoulder here, there are some 
that like things that form a pleat at the shoulder so we're going to need to keep make provision for that now all right so now the first thing i'm going to do is we're going to need to make three marks at the shoulder this is going to keep allowance for um the darts all right so i'm going to come here and after one inch 1.5 inches sorry after 1.5 inches away from the neck they're going to make a mark all right and half inch one inch after that you make another mark so you see the first mark was one and a half inch away from the neck after that one inch and then for the last one one inch all right you see that and then we're going to simply roll lines from here all the way down all right and then we're going to make a cuts into this pattern that we have here so you see this you see the way i'm cutting it all right as i was cutting this they took the light so use the opportunity to quickly ride out and get this these are the shoulder pads so i'm going to use this to give to pad the shoulder so this is what i'm using Alright, and then next thing we want to do is you're going to need to open up this top here. I'm going to need to spread this, alright, and tape it. I'm going to open it up, use your tape to tape it down. Before we do, let's get our pattern, our fabric, so that I can show you how to cut this because I can't tape it to the table here. So get your fabric laid on a fold on your table, and then we're going to tape this on top of the fabric, alright? So now when you are laying this on the table, remember that this is a cowl neck, okay? So we want it to have a lot of excess in front. So you can see, facing the folded edge here, I'm going to keep a lot of excess, all right? So what you're going to do is simply keep the bottom part, see this bottom part here, keep it on an edge like this. So come to the edge of your fabric and place it like so. And then I'm going to keep a space of at least eight inches in front of here, okay? All right, so you can see that I have eight inches in front of there, and then we're going to go ahead to spread it. But before we start to spread it like so, I'm going to take down that front part. You want to keep a lot of excess in front of here. Is that excess that will fall down here in front? All right. So let me first tape this down. And then we're going to go ahead to keep a space of two, at least two inches between these places here okay at least for well, two inches is a good space to keep so you're going to keep two inches between the two sides and then we're going to tape it down and then i'll repeat the same thing for all the other cuts that i have all right so after you've taped it down the next step is to cut it so i'm going to cut the side here the same as you are going to see, I'm going to cut up the shoulder, cut the neck. But well, here, I'm going to go straight down. I'm not going to come down in any way. But just watch and see how I cut this. Alright, so you can see we have done all of all we have done. What I want you to do now is you see these in-betweens that we have. You are going to pick it up right in the middle. And you are going to make a notch here, okay? This is going to guide you when it's time to make pleats because we're going to make some stitches at the top of the shoulder to take away some of the excess, all this excess at the shoulder. We won't need it at the end of the day, all right? So we're going to need this here to serve as our guide. So these notches I'm making, these notches I'm making at the shoulder is going to be my guide on how much, on how I pinch the, the um, pinch I will pinch when I'm the sewing machine <laughs> pinch. Um, so, I will take this out. Let me take this out so that you can see what we have done so far. Alright, so because cut it on the folded edge, if you take a look at the center, you can see that it's forming that drape that we want already. Okay, you can see it by the time we hold the shoulder, it's going to drape will come from all over the shoulder, it's going to look so delicious. Um, so, now the next step is just simply cut the back as it is. As for the back, I'm going to simply make a fold. This will still face the folded edge. 
simply make a fold that is just enough for the back. You can simply go ahead and cut. We are not going to make any alterations to the back because the back is the main block. So that it will, it will be the job of the back to bring the fronts together. Okay, so the back is not going to have any drip, nothing going on with the back. The back is going to make sure that it brings the fronts and keep it in line. This We've cut the back. Next, let's move on to the sewing machine so that we can start building all these parts together. Now, I must add that there is another shoulder pad that you can get that is cleaner than this, looks better than this. But I did not go to the main market that we have in my city. I went to a little um, sewing accessory shop to simply just get this and show you guys how to fix it. But because we are not sewing this with um, a lining, uh, so there will be no way of making this neat, like neat, neat. But there's another um, uh, shoulder pad that is covered with fabric and it has a woven edge. If I had gone to the main market, I would find that, but I would not be able to make this video on time. But so this will still be enough to show you the example I want to show you, um, but yeah. And again, for this particular one, I won't need all this excess white thing hanging around the body of the actual pad. 